standpoint, uh, really uh, only guy that, that uh, won't be in the mix with obviously two guys I mentioned last week with injuries and Matt Bailey. Um, but uh, as I've been with us all week, everybody has checked in. So unless anything happens between now and Saturday, we should be good. We obviously the new reporting system with the uh, 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 a Big Ten policy. We'll, we'll send out that two hours before I, prior to kick, so that'll be your most up to date. But don't foresee any problems or issues there. Um, really thought our guys have been locked in again last week to have the the week with pla with classes to have that carry into this week of game week has been a huge asset. So uh, got all that worked out. Um, just had our Thursday morning practice. We'll come over have a, a quick meeting this afternoon. They get a, a lift in the afternoon. Uh, tomorrow we'll come over in the afternoon have our meetings and jump into our normal Friday night routine and be ready to roll. So i um, excited to watch some college football tonight. Wish everybody in college football the best of luck, and, and we'll get this thing going. Coach, you were 13 in 1983 when the team was the oh, yeah. ball. Just what do you remember that, and tell me what your thoughts on that. Too. Yeah, um, you know, I, I grew up, I've said this before, a big Illinois fan, yeah. and especially at, at that, uh, I remember specifically, uh, you know, being at that age, seeing that team play the way they did, the names that are coming back for this Rose Bowl reunion, or, or, or these things have been pretty cool to see that. Um, even just, uh, you know, I, I remember I got here and I met Doug Altenberger at the at a basketball game, right? He was a guy that I watched growing up, right? It's just kind of fun to relive those two from the memory of that. Um, but uh, super excited. I think former players in general, um, it's been very, very awesome since I've been here to see the interest. Uh, uh, to see the uh, the pride that they have contacted me and talked about what they love to see right now, and hopefully this weekend's a big part of that. Have you met Mike, Mike White at all? I have not. I've talked to him on the phone, uh, but uh, uh, never called me back when I was uh, coming out. Uh, but uh, uh, I really, when I got the job here, I kind of reached out to every uh, right. former Illinois coach and, and uh, kind of did my diligence there. I know you said Matt. No change. But like, what's next for him, and what's he been able? Matt Bailey. To, yeah, sorry. yeah. And then what's he been able to do? Yeah, he was running around out there today. Um, he's been out of his boot uh, for probably uh, over a week now. Um, so he has uh, another appointment on Sunday after the game. Um, that if if that is where we hope it'll be at, then he'll begin running next week, and we'll have him for the Penn State game. And then Des, we haven't asked about him in a while. How's Des? Des Schuster. Um, unfortunately, Des lost his grandmother yesterday, uh, so uh, that kind of has been a, a little thing he's been dealing with. But again, he actually has a um, uh, procedure checkup today. Um, if that goes the way it is, then we'll begin to progress him next week. And he may not be as fast as Matt, but uh, that appointment today will tell us a lot about where he can go. You had that one unsettled uh, spot on the, on the offensive line, right guard. Is that, do you, who do you expect to start? Yeah, Geske and Zai will be the right side uh, guard and tackle. Um, they've run pretty much that way all through fall camp. And uh, we feel that those those five guys, uh, Jordan Slaughter will definitely rep in there, Zach Barlev, uh, Hunter Whitenecks had a really good last two weeks at camp. So uh, a number of guys. And then, of course, um, uh, freshman uh, Brandon Henderson is a guy that I think would probably get in there and play some reps as well. Safety results, too? Yeah. Um, uh, Miles Scott and uh, starting safety to be Clayton Bush and Miles Scott. Um, and, and I think, but a lot of safeties will get a rotation in there from Mac Rosetich to um, uh, Nakari Harper to uh, uh, Demetrius Hill. All those guys will get some reps on Saturday. Kevin's usually been up in the box for the last couple of years. Who's the defensive? Andy will go up there. Uh, you know, Andy's had, uh, so I'd, again, uh, on the defense side of the ball, Antonio Finellis has been a defense coordinator. Aaron Henry, obviously, our active coordinator. Andy Boo has been a defense coordinator. Um, so to have that many guys that have called a game and have game experience. Uh, last year we had Kevin up there. Just thought because of the way the de uh, the staff fit together, that was the best option. So uh, this year we'll go with Andy upstairs. Uh, Charlie will be downstairs. Um, we'll have a couple other modifications. Coach Lonnie is actually going up in the box as well this year. So uh, some different looks for us on on the staff. Okay. I guess I'm like kind of kidding, but do you have to talk to the officials about Johnny and his brother? Like I assume they're going to talk. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm mostly kidding, but I'm sure. No. One of the things I do, my standard policy is, you know, just make officials aware of anything that's out there, right? Like um, this official is actually our, our head head official, our white hat is actually new from the from the uh, Pac-12 conference. He came in and joined us last spring. Uh, so it'll be his first Big Ten game as well. So um, you're gonna have to work through those moments and, and, and but it's all Big Ten staff. So there'll be some commonalities, but I think situations like that, uh, also just, you know, in-game moments that I know are gonna, gonna come up. Um, we definitely go over those little details with the officials for sure. And that would be one I would say. I believe 18 former players made rosters this week. Uh, what's your pride on your former players uh, making rosters? Yeah, you know, as our former players, I appreciate it. But like uh, one of the things that jumped out to me when I first got here was the lack of Illinois players in the, in the, in the league, right? I just, it kind of jumped out to me. And then um, one of the things that's really grown here, and I saw a list of 18 or 19 guys, maybe it was Tommy because of the practice squad, but I believe more than half of those were guys that played up and suited for us, right? And 
um, to hear their voices. Obviously, we're busy this week, but I, I tried to reach out to anybody that's played for me that made a roster and, and to hear their uh, excitement, uh, to hear their, uh, um, you know, uh, basically thanking for their experiences. It's, it's a pretty awesome moment. Is Palcho kind of a, a, a poster for, hey, you can take the long road through college and still make it? Yeah, and then, you know, another one in the first year, if you think about another one, I'm really excited for him. I called Jake Hansen, right? So he was a guy that, if you remember, he left, right? And then literally came back. And there was a lot of conversations that took, had to take place for that to happen between him, our compliance office, the Big Ten office, the NCAA. It was a really great group effort. And if you remember his story, he was playing at a pretty good level and he tore his ACL in the Wisconsin game. And I know there was this moment I said, hey, I know it doesn't make sense now, but it all will at some point. And he got invited to the Combine, made an active roster a year ago. Now he's got a new coaching staff. Obviously, Lovey, when he got let go there, I think there were some concerns, right, that he didn't know that new staff. And uh, I called him the other night and, you know, he's – literally uh, running as a number two Sam, number two Will, and he starts on all four core phases of the kicking game, and you could just hear it through his voice. Uh, now he's excited because his little brother's a snapper as well. Uh, so uh, that, that was a really gratifying phone call, pretty good, pretty for much. The, for the guys that are going to run out of that tunnel the first time, maybe two freshmen, do you, on Friday night, kind of give them a message of, hey, don't play the game in warm-ups, you know, so keep your heart rate as You know, we've had two games, two right. scrimmages that we've treated as mock games. We've literally opened that garage with the smoke, got fireworks, so we've made it as game-like as we humanly possibly can. As a head coach, you you, you got to go through those things, put them in those moments, explain it. Even tonight's, so this Thursday travel meeting, I get up in front, I'm the only one in there, no other coaches are in there, and I give them a 15-minute big picture window about not only our game, but the season, and um, I've asked our guys that have played, like kind of share with them, how's our preparation from this day forward? Because they'll, they'll walk in and do it, but these other guys got to be brought along, so uh, we have an Illini council, which is a player at every position group, that'll kind of lead his guys at that position that haven't done that. But there'll be a certain message of that for sure. So what is Josh and then Miles and Clayton, Geske, Miles and Clayton, showing you to win, the, win those respective jobs? Um, well, Josh Geske, first off, has probably been one of the biggest improved players from last fall to this fall. Uh, you can see it in the spring. You can see it in the uh, way he handled his business to get to the spring. You know, Josh is also a non lot. You know, he's a diabetic, right? So he. The, 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 the personal things that he goes through just to get ready for practice every day just makes an incredible comment to me about the way he prepares. Um, and he's just gotten really good at football. And, and I think not only us as coaches, but the other players see it, right? And then he popped out at right tackle, so he's got a lot of flexibility. Uh, I've talked about Tony Pachos, who's been a guy that's been mentoring him. So Miles Scott, really going back to last spring, just as soon as we put him, we tried to play him at corner. I told those guys, hey, he's a safety, he's a safety, he's a safety. Once we put him there, it was even more natural, right? So. Just instinctive, he runs because of his offensive background. I think he understands concepts and routes uh, a little bit better as what they go. And then who was the other one? Uh, Clayton Bush. Oh, Clayton Bush. Clayton, I would say Clayton, Demetrius, Nicario, those guys have all been in a pretty intense battle. Um, obviously, Matt Bailey would, would normally man that spot. But, uh, you know, Clayton is an incredibly athletic, uh, really good high point. Uh, the ball, he, he's got a good feel down the box. He's probably are literally, uh, him and Isaiah are two best punt returners. I mean, he just got a really good knack for seeing the ball off off a of vision and break, and then he's a pretty tough kid. So uh, I think overall, I'm just excited to see him, Demetrius, and Nicario kind of get into the action. Coach, besides the normal stuff that helps you win a game, what, what do you think are some keys against this specific opponent? Against Toledo? Yes. Yeah, well, good point, I think. But you know, whether we were playing Toledo, if we opened up a year ago against Wyoming, the first year against Nebraska, I think what you got to understand, it's still how Illinois football plays Illinois football, right? So I've talked to those guys a lot. That's been a big one for us. We need to prep and play to play Illinois football. Um, I think every snap that we take, I don't care if it's field goal protection or field goal block, uh, if it's punt, punt return, if it's offense, defense, we got to take every snap to play physical and fast, right? Like the only way you can do that is to know your assignments before they happen. And then, uh, you know, for us, uh, this is the beginning of our schedule. This is the beginning of our journey. You're going to have to ride the highs and, and, and battle through the lows. And that happens in, in a week, it happens in a practice, and it definitely happens in a game. So we got to respond to bad moments. Is there a value in getting a champion right off the bat in the MAC champs? Well, it's what we've, you know, they haven't been to lead to us. They've been MAC champs uh, since last spring to where they are. They're projected to be the next uh, MAC champs again. So it's kind of a good message for our players to hear. And then I think our players respect good players. And when they see Toledo play, they see the way that they play uh, the individual play. Like, you know, I, you know, they have Rossi, who's up for an Outland Trophy at the offensive line. is a really good player. Obviously, their quarterback speaks for itself. They have some back-end guys at corner and safety. They're as good as good gets. Actually, the corner was uh, committed here at one point, right? And it's kind of a crazy uh, way that it all lays out. Um, just a lot of really good players. And then, obviously, everybody respects Johnny and his family and what they do. So I think even uh, Jawan, like, however this um, – 
plays out, they see another really good player. They know how good a player Johnny is. Now they hear his brother's up for the Blitnikoff. That gathers their attention really quickly. So you know, Sean Payton used two of your three yeah. big words to describe Pouch. I mean, I imagine that stood out to you a little bit. It did. Uh, um, you know, I first uh, met Coach Payton at a uh, uh, track meet in Rantoul, Illinois, to recruit Sean Bubin, if you can believe that one. Uh, and and uh, I've always admired his coach style. And then when Paucho, they, they had called us before draft and talked about their ability to hopefully sign him. And I saw that when that happened on uh, uh, the, the free agent signing, I, I felt really good. And then he's the guy that I called the night of the, of the uh, uh, cut roster and saw that he made the list. And it was a pretty cool phone call. I probably can't repeat it to you guys, right? You can imagine. Uh, but like he just stands for all of those things, right? Tough, smart, dependable. And, and obviously it means a lot to Sean too. Do you have any conversations with the Patriots when Bedarian Obviously you, got some you know, it was interesting how that whole point played out because I had some conversations back on draft day. Uh, and if you look up the history, the Vikings had a, a selection one or two before the Patriots on that exact moment. Um, so this is one that I think you could probably see coming for a while and then uh, everything else. All good. Thanks, man. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Absolutely.